Hey everyone, in this example, we are given a vector v, which is 12i minus 5j, and we are asked to find a unit vector that is in the same direction as our starting vector v. So remember, a unit vector is just a vector with a length or magnitude of 1. So let's go ahead and let u denote our unit vector. And so we need to scale our vector v appropriately so that it becomes a vector of length 1. And so we're going to take a scalar multiple of our vector v. When we take the magnitude of our scalar multiple of our vector v, that has to come out to give us 1. And so using some of our algebraic properties for vectors, we can kind of factor this. We can write this as the magnitude of k times the magnitude of our vector v is equal to 1. It's safe to assume that k is going to be a positive constant here, so we can drop the absolute values around it or its magnitude. Right? If k was negative, then we wouldn't be maintaining the exact same direction as our vector v. We'd be traveling in the reverse or opposite direction. So well, now, what does k have to actually be equal to? Well, just 1 over the magnitude of our vector v. Remember, this is just a scalar equation. Once we take the magnitude of our vector, the magnitude itself is just a scalar real number. And so this is a, an important fact to remember in general. Whenever we want to take a vector and turn it into a unit vector, we always just take that vector and divide it by its magnitude or multiply it by 1 over its magnitude. So to do this for our vector v here, we have to find the magnitude of our vector v, which remember we can find using the distance formula or the Pythagorean theorem. It always ends up being the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So it'll be 12 squared plus negative 5 squared. That's the square root of 144 plus 25, or the square root of 169, which happens to be a perfect square and the square root of 169 gives us 13. Okay, so now we know our magnitude of our vector v is 13. We have to divide our vector v by this magnitude or divide each component of v by 13 to create our unit vector u. So in general, a unit vector is always just going to be the vector divided by the magnitude of the vector that we are trying to turn into a unit vector. Our vector v was 12i minus 5j, and we're dividing that by the scalar magnitude of 13. So we can distribute that and recognize that our unit vector u is going to have 12 thirteenths for that i component, and negative 5 thirteenths for that j or vertical component. So it didn't take too long, but we did it. We found our unit vector u that points in the same direction as our starting vector v. Hey everyone, so we've seen a few ways to represent our vectors. One of them, the first way was geometrically, just by drawing some directed line segments. And then we focused in on an algebraic approach to our vectors using those i and j components. I want to spend a little bit more time talking about that geometric interpretation of our vector as that directed line segment and help us connect those two pictures together, help us go from uh, the component version to our geometric version. And so here we're going to let our vector v just be a random vector, ai plus bj. And I'm just going to go ahead and put the terminal point of our vector in the first quadrant. Although the stuff we're going to write down and the analysis we're going to perform will work no matter what quadrant our vector kind of has its terminal point in. So our i and j components, a and b, help us a lot for understanding our vector in the rectangular coordinate system. So just to add that interpretation to our picture, we can introduce this little right triangle by drawing a vertical uh, line down from the uh, end of our vector and a horizontal line from the start of our vector to create this little right triangle. And what we know about the dimensions of this right triangle is that it's going to have a base of A corresponding to the I component of our vector V, and it will have a height of B corresponding to the J component of our vector V. And then we can find the hypotenuse, which is the length or magnitude of our vector V, just using the uh, Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula. That ends up being the square root of A squared plus B squared. Let's go ahead and just write that as the magnitude of v. 
And so our components A and B do a great job of describing how to go from the initial point of our vector to the ending point, just using these right and vertical steps. But that is not the only way to describe how to get to our endpoint. That is like a rectangular coordinate system way to describe how to get to our endpoint. We can also describe how to get to our endpoint using some other coordinate systems or using some other methods similar to some other coordinate systems. Specifically, I'm talking about our polar coordinate system. Remember, we can get to a point in the polar coordinate system by specifying a direction and a distance we have to travel in that direction. And so that gives us a nice connection between polar coordinates and vectors because vectors are just quantities with a magnitude and a direction. The direction is, well, the direction our vector is pointing and the magnitude is how far we travel in that direction or the length of our vector. So our components A and B get the job done by telling us we have to take A steps in the I direction, then B steps in the J direction. We can also describe our vector more like the polar coordinate system by saying our direction is given by this angle theta and we travel this distance in the direction of our angle theta where that distance is the magnitude or length of our vector V. And so now what we want to do is kind of figure out how can we translate between these two equivalent but different representations of our vector. And well, to do all that, we just do some simple right triangle trigonometry. All right, so what we want to do is try to come up with some formulas that allow us to express A and B in terms of just the magnitude of our vector and the angle of direction theta. And so well, to do that, we use our right triangles. So we can just start taking sine, cosine, and tangent of our angle, and that'll help us establish all of these relationships. It's gonna be a lot of those same kind of translation equations that we saw for our polar coordinate system to our rectangular coordinate system. So for example, if we take cosine of our angle theta, we can evaluate cosine of theta using the right triangle that we have set up here. Cosine is the adjacent side length divided by the hypotenuse. So that'll be A over the magnitude of V. And now we can solve this equation for A just by multiplying both sides by the magnitude of V. And so very quickly, we can find our horizontal, our X or our I component of our vector V going from this more trigonometric interpretation just by taking the magnitude of our vector V and multiplying it by cosine of this angle theta. Similarly, if we take sine of our angle theta, well, that would give us opposite over hypotenuse or B over the magnitude of V. And this equation we can solve for B just again by multiplying both sides by the magnitude of V. And now we see B is equal to the magnitude of B times sine of our angle theta. And so now the idea is if the only information we had starting out was the magnitude of our vector, and the angle of direction, so it's magnitude and direction, where the direction is this angle theta measured from the positive x-axis, then we could always convert from that interpretation of our vector to this component interpretation by finding the a and b values using our formulas we just derived. So our vector v, which is ai plus bj in the picture we have set up here, can also be expressed as the magnitude of v times cosine of theta i plus the magnitude of V times sine of theta J. And so if we, uh, we know the magnitude or length of our vector as well as the direction it travels in, we can very quickly use this formula to compute the I and J components. Or we can also do this problem in reverse. Say we know A and B, the I and J components. We can use those to very quickly find the magnitude of V. And then we could use one of our little trig formulas or the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent B over A to help us find theta just by taking tangent inverse of that ratio B over A or for solving for theta in one of our other equations once we know those other two pieces of information. Although we will have to be a little bit careful sometimes when finding theta, right? Because if we end up with an angle like pointing in the, uh, the third quadrant, but we want it to be pointing in the first quadrant, we might have to add 180 degrees to that angle or use the negative R value if you're thinking back to polar coordinates. But here, our R value is like the magnitude though, so we always want to keep that positive, so we'd pretty much just have to adjust that angle by like adding or subtracting 180 degrees.